Okay, let's do some tactical exercises now. It's very good to do this in a, actually every day. Just every day solve some tactical puzzles so then your um, tactical skills stay sharp. Okay, so well, it's, it's here why to move. And um, let's see, there is an undefended piece on d7 here, this bishop. And there is something going on on h7. If we can get rid of this knight, let's say for example g4, if knight h6, then queen h7 check. If the king goes to f8, we have a check on h8 with the queen. The knight must be placed in between g8, and then we can play knight to h7 checkmate. That looks nice. Let's check one more time. g4. What if the knight doesn't move? It could attack my knight. So if g4, then f6 attacking my knight. Hmm. And then it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. Okay, there is another option. Still with the same idea of h7 and the undefended piece on d7. Queen h3. Threatening queen h7, king f8, queen h8, checkmate. So queen h3. The only way to prevent queen h7 would be to play knight to h6 and then queen takes d7. I think this must be the solution. Let's check it one more time. Queen to h3. Threatening queen h7. Is there anything else that he can do against queen h7? He has an in-between check, perhaps queen b6, but that's only a check and nothing more. We can simply go to h1. Yeah, I think queen to h3 must be the solution. Let's check it. Queen h3. Yes, knight h6, and now we take the bishop. That's it. Alright, let's go to the next problem. There we are. So it's black to move here. And what's going on? What's going on? We could... There's a back rank issue here, I think. And there is an undefended piece on c6. Let's see. This is not that clear. Check on the back rank, then simply put that the rook goes to g1. And I don't see anything else at the moment. Let's have a good look. Well, there is also... Perhaps we can combine both things. I'm, I'm thinking that if we give a check on a1, the rook goes to g, g1, and then we could perhaps take on d4. No, trade queens. I'm well, sorry, trade queens. Trade, <laughs> trade rooks, I mean. Trade rooks on g1, and after king takes g1, the knight takes d4. Threatening a fork on f3, and also threatening to take this bishop. I think that's the combination. Let's check it. Uh, rook takes, I'm sorry, rook a1 check. There is no other move than rook to g1. Rook takes g1. Only one move. King takes g1 and then knight takes d4. The bishop is attacked. Wherever it moves, the continuation is knight takes f3. Um, yeah, that must be it. Okay, let's check it. Uh, rook check. Yeah, this is the solution. And then knight takes d4. Okay, he gives the computer gives the rook, but it's just uh, winning. All right. Okay, let's go for one more here. Okay, so an undefended king. 
an undefended king on h8. Let's see. If the rook wouldn't be here, we could we would have a checkmate on g8. Um, If the queen wouldn't be on h4, we would have a check on f6 for king, king and rook. That's another thing. What else? Let me have a good look here. Now we also can have some possibilities to advance this pawn somehow. Advancing it on, with the idea perhaps of playing queen to e8 check. Mm, but then the rook is defended by the queen. Wait a minute, what about queen to e7? Attacking the rook, attacking the queen. If queen takes queen, pawn takes queen. Rook to e8 and then a rook to d8 and then we promote after rook takes rook pawn takes rook queening so let's see queen e7 what happens after knight to g3 check king h2 knight g6 defending his queen attacking my queen then simply trade queens and then take the knight on g3 so it looks like queen to e7 is winning he doesn't have time for knight takes f3 or anything like that because his queen is attacked all right let's let's see if this is correct queen to e7 yes he gives the check Let's see, we can go to g1 or to h2, does it matter? Well, I think h, h2 is good because we attack them this night. Okay, he does play indeed this, and then we trade queens. And then we take the knight. Yeah, that's it. That's the solution. Oh, well, that was a nice one. Okay, let's go for the last one. Alright, so why to move? Oh, I see it. This is... <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It's not that easy. I was thinking I saw rook takes knight and then king takes an, uh, rook and then knight takes e5 check for king. But after rook takes d7 uh, there is also rook takes um, e4 check. King to f3, rook e3 check. And after that, he can take on d7. Okay, so it's not that clear. Um, rook takes knight, rook takes pawn, king to d2. And then it takes the rook on d7. We don't have a fork. Okay, that doesn't work. Rook is undefended, pawn is attacked. Hmm. Let's see. So this combination, rook takes knight, doesn't work because he can play rook takes e4. But we can yes that's it that's it now I see the solution we can uh, force black to retake the rook by first giving a check on d6 so rook to d6 check is the first move the king cannot come this way because of the pawn so he has to go to the seventh rank and then we take the knight with check that's important with check so king takes rooks forced and then knight takes e5 forking rook and king 
that's it yeah let's check it check yeah there we are and this is it all right um, if you would like to do this type of exercises on your own uh, go to chesttempo.com that's the place where you can find hundreds thousands of this type of positions and practice simply practice if you get the wrong solution then uh, you get simply to see the res the, the correct solution on a, on a side window so it's a very good way to practice your tactics alright thanks very much for watching for this time and uh, I'll see you next time goodbye